In this video, you'll learn guidelines for conducting one-minute timings. You'll also have a chance to practice marking errors. There are several situations in which teachers time students' reading. During screening, one-minute timings occur while identifying students who need fluency help. In Read Naturally Encore, one-minute timings happen during placement and as students work through stories. During screening, Teachers use the screening tools and guidelines adopted by their districts. For students who do need work on fluency, teachers administer a placement test in Encore. This involves a one-minute timed reading to place students in a level with an appropriate goal. Once a student is working in the program, teachers conduct one-minute cold and hot timings to monitor progress. Each of these timings serves a different purpose and you'll use the resulting scores in different ways. But the mechanics of conducting a one-minute timing are the same in each circumstance. Let's watch a teacher conduct a one-minute timing with her student. They'll sit next to each other so they can both see the passage text. Hi, Megan. Hi. How are you doing today? Good. Good. When working with a student, explain that you'll be listening to the student read, and if necessary, state the purpose of the timing in terms the student can understand. Your explanation will differ depending on the type of timing and the age of the student. I am going to have you read a few passages for me, okay? Mm -hmm. So I want you to read as carefully as you can and try to read every word, okay? Right, here's the first passage. It is called Ice Cream Sodas. Set the timer for one minute and direct the student's attention to the beginning of the passage. Don't say, ready, set, go. Instead, say, when I hear your voice, I'll start my timer. It's important to let students control when they start reading. When the student begins reading, activate the timer. If the student reads the title, don't start the timer until they start reading the passage text. So when I hear your voice, I'll start my timer. Most people have heard the same. When As the student reads, tally the errors. Mark the errors in a way that doesn't distract the student. To get consistent results, all adults conducting timings at your school need to count errors in the same way. Read Naturally has guidelines for counting errors. In most cases, the guidelines that Read Naturally suggests are probably similar to what you'd expect. For example, mispronunciations, dropped endings, and omitted words all count as errors. In other cases, Read Naturally's guidelines may differ from what you're used to. For example, the guidelines recommend counting each mispronunciation of a name or proper noun as an error. Sold soda pop in Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Having this rule reduces judgment calls about whether the student's pronunciation is close enough to count the word as correct. Following this guideline yields more consistent scores. An exception to the mispronunciation rule occurs if a student mispronounces a word because of dialect or a speech impairment. In these cases, you typically wouldn't count the mispronunciation as an error. However, if the student is working with a speech-language pathologist, you may wish to discuss this rule with the specialist. During the timing, if the student is stuck on a word, Wait three seconds, then supply the word and count it as an error. People really liked a special special drink he made with soda pop and sweet. If the student transposes two words, count each word read out of order as an error. Um, Green did when he invented accidentally the ice cream soda. If the student substitutes one word for another, even if the substitution is a synonym, count it as an error. Instead of shutting the stand down early, he decided to make the best of it. If the student makes the same error more than once, count each instance as an error. Before inventing ice cream soda, Mr. Green made about $6 a day. After inventing ice cream soda, he made about $600 a day. Some teachers are taught to count repeated errors only once. 
However, because the final score for a read naturally timing is really the number of words the student can read correctly in a minute, we have to deduct errors each time they're repeated. When a student self-corrects, don't count the initial mistake as an error. Likewise, it's not an error if a student repeats a word or phrase she says correctly. The saying, when life gives you, gives you lemon, gives you lemons, make lemonade. Finally, if a student adds words, don't count the inserted words as errors. It's important not to count insertions as errors. Doing so would make the student's final score appear lower than it should be. Most people have heard of the saying, when life gives you... When the timer sounds, tell the student to stop reading and make note of the last word the student read. Let's see how you did. Count the number of words the student read in a minute. Begin with the number to the left of the line and count each word. 51, 52, 53, 54, 55. There are a couple of guidelines to help you count words in unusual situations. For example, a number written as a numeral counts as one word, as do abbreviations. Also, if two words are connected by a hyphen, both words count. To determine the student's words correct per minute score, Subtract the errors from the number of words read. Record the student's words correct per minute score. You'll use the score differently depending on your purpose. For example, during placement, you'll check to see if the score fits the initial placement range for the level tested. But on a hot timing, you'll compare the score to the student's goal to see if they pass the story. Now let's practice counting errors during a timing. Find the Firewalker story in your handout. This is Christopher. As he reads, tally his errors, mark the last word read, and calculate his words correct per minute score. When I hear your voice, I'll start the timer. Ready? In 1959, some people watched something strange. It happened on the island of Bolo. Oh, they watched men walk on fire. The fire walks looked on a pint of hot coal with bare feet. The coals were so hot they could burn through tyke boats in the Few seconds, few seconds, the fire bug all all the walked walked all the way down the pine. The pine was forty feet long. Now take a moment to pause the video and calculate Christopher's score. Resume the video when you are ready. Christopher read up to the word 40 in the sentence. The pit was 40 feet long. That's word number 61 in the story. He made 13 errors, so his score is 48 words correct per minute. Did you get a similar score? Let's listen to Christopher read again, this time marking his errors together. When I hear your voice, I'll start the timer. Ready? In 1959, some people watched something strange. It happened on the island of Bolo. Bolo. They watched men walk on fire. The fire walks looked on a pint of hot coal with Bare feet. The coals were so hot they could burn through tyke boats in the few seconds, few seconds, the fire bug 
all the, all the walked walked all the way down the pine. The pine was forty feet long. Gotcha. Let's practice one more time as Christopher reads a different passage. In your handout, find the story titled Gorilla. When I hear your voice, I'll start my timer. Gorilla, the very, the very world travel terrifies terrifies people. They think gorillas are monsters who could it like like to tear the limb 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 of limb from limb and it be strain to be sure sure gorillas look frightening their face look mean and they are big and strong but they okay. the now pause the video and calculate the score resume the video when you are ready Christopher read up to the word but, which is word number 38. He made nine errors, so he read 29 words correctly in a minute. Now listen to Christopher read the same passage again as we mark his errors together. Did you identify the same errors as his teacher? When I hear your voice, I'll start my timer. Gorilla, the airy, the airy world. Travel terrifies terrifies people. They think gorillas are monsters who could like 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 to tear the limb 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 of limb from limb and it be strain to be sure sure gorillas look frightening their face look mean and they are big and strong but they okay. now you know how to conduct a one minute timing Refer to the teacher's manual or placement packet for information on interpreting and using timing scores.